the acquisition by Yahoo, can you tell the story of that? But also in the broader context of this internet bubble, this is sure. a fascinating part it was of human time. history. Yeah. So on the acquisition side, we were the largest media site on the internet and it wasn't close. Mm -hmm. There was nobody close. We were YouTube and relatively speaking, we would be 10X YouTube relative to the competition because there was nobody there. Um, and so it became obvious to Yahoo, AOL, and others that they needed a multimedia component. And we had the infrastructure, sales, all that stuff. Um, and so Yahoo, when we went public in 98, or right before I think it was, they made an investment of like $2 million, which gave us a connection to them. And then after we went public, they decided they needed to have multimedia. And so in April of 99, we made a deal. And then July of 2000 is when it closed. And uh, can you explain to me the trickiness of what you did after that? Oh, the, 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 um, the collar? Yeah. Okay, so when we sold to Yahoo, we sold for $5.7 billion in stock, not cash. And so I looked at, I, you know, after Microsolutions, um, when I sold that, um, I took that money, and initially I, I told my broker I wanted to invest like a 60-year-old man because I wanted to protect it. Yeah. Um, but then he started asking me all kinds of questions about all these technologies that I understood, like networks I had un installed. We had become one of the top, 20, let's say, um, systems integrators in the country. At one point in time, we we're the largest IBM token ring um, installer in the country. It was crazy, right? Banyan, wow. the name blast from the past. I mean, so anyway, so these Wall Street bankers, um, or analysts rather, um, that were the big analysts of the time would call me up because they would ask my broker, what does he know about this product? This product? And I knew them all, what was working and not working, right? And so the ones that worked, you know, I say that it's working. I see the stock, they say something, the stock would go up 20 bucks, right? So I'm like, well, and my broker's like, you need to, you know this better than they do. You need to invest. So I started buying and selling stocks and this was in 1990 and was just killing it. I was making 80, 90, 100% a year um, over those next four years to the point where guy came in and asked to use my trading history to start a hedge fund which we did, and I sold within nine months. It was great, right? But the point being, as it goes forward, so when um, we sold to Yahoo, I already had a lot of experience trading stocks. And I had seen different bubbles come and go, a bubble for PC manufacturers, a bubble for networking manufacturers. They went up, 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 and then they came straight down after the hype, or somebody just um, leapfrogged. And so when we sold to Yahoo, um, I was like, I've got a B next to my name. Mm -hmm. That's all I need or all I want. I don't want to be greedy. And I'd seen this story before where stocks get really frothy and go straight down. And I knew that because all of what I had was in stock, I needed to find a way to collar it and protect it. So understanding stocks and trading and options and all that, my broker and I, we went and shorted an index that had Yahoo in it. And so the law at the time was you couldn't short any indexes that had more than 5% of that stock in it, right? Mm -hmm. That of anyone's, of the, the Yahoo stock. And so um, I took pretty much 20 some million dollars, everything I had at the time, and I shorted the index. This is fascinating by the way, because it's based on a, your estimation that this is a bubble. Or just mine not wanting to be, to be greedy. Sure, uh, so you're, the foundation of this kind of thinking is uh, you don't want to be greedy. Yeah, I mean, how much money do I need, right? Yeah. You know, where other people were saying, oh, I think it can go up higher, higher, higher. I was like, I, I went on CNBC and um, I told them what I had done and they were like, and Yahoo stock had gone up significantly from the time I had, had collared. And one of the guys, Joe Kernan was on there, don't you feel stupid now that Yahoo stock has gone up um, you know, X percent more? I'm like, yeah, I feel real stupid sitting on my jet. <laughs> yeah. But so, you, I mean, there is some fundamental way in which bubbles are based on this greed. Oh, this for sure, for sure. Greed. Yeah, and I'd seen it before, right? Like I just said. And so what I did was we put together a collar where I sold calls and bought puts. And as it turned out, when the market just cratered, I was protected. And, you know, over the next two, three years, whatever it was, it, it converted to cash, paid my taxes, et cetera, but um, it protected me. And, and as it turns out, it was called one of the top 10 trades of all time. And what was even more interesting out of that period, um, my broker at that time was at Goldman Sachs, and I had asked him to see 
if there was a way to trade VIX, the VIX, right? The volatility index. And there, there wasn't, right? And so one of the, the people that Goldman that we were working with to try to create this actually left Goldman and created indexes that allowed you to, to trade the VIX. Well, it's not trivial to understand that it's a bubble. I mean, you're kind of lessening your insight into all this by saying you just didn't want to be greedy, but you still have to see that it's a bubble. Yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously, if I thought it was going to keep on going up and it was there was intrinsic value there, I would have stayed in it. But it, it wasn't so much Yahoo; it was just the entire industry. You would back then, you know, it, like we're looking at the the Magic Seven or whatever it is stocks now, and people are asking, "Is it in a bubble?" And when I would get into cabs and people would just start talking about internet stocks. There were people creating companies with just a website and going public. You know, that's a yeah. bubble, right? Where there's no intrinsic value at all. And people aren't even trying to make operating cap profits. They're just trying to leverage the frothiness of the stock market. That's a bubble. You don't see that right now. There's not companies, you don't see hardly, you don't see any IPOs right now for that matter. So, you know, I don't think we're in a bubble now, but back then, yes, I thought we were in a bubble, but that wasn't really the motivating factor. Do you think it's possible we're in a bit of an AI bubble right now? No, because we're not seeing funky AI companies just go public. If all of a sudden we see a rush of companies who are skins on other people's models or, or just yeah. creating models to create models that are going public, then yeah, that's probably the start of a bubble. Um, but that said, my, my 14 year old was bragging about buying NVIDIA, you know, with me in, in his Robinhood account. He tells me the order, I place it. And he was like, <laughs> oh yeah, it's going up, 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 you know? And I'm like, yeah, we're not quite there yet, but that's you know that's one thing to pay attention. Yeah, we're to. flirting with it. Yeah, 